this is Wendy. Welcome to my channel. Uh, thank you for being here. Today I want to do a, a VR to uh, Mystic Wild for a Meg at Rose Honey Ritual. And she did a, a video the other day with a hashtag, uh, Deck Deal Breakers. And I was so giddy, 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 giddy to do this because I was like laying in bed like the last two nights thinking about it because I'm so childish and, and I have this, especially I can rant about cardstock a little bit because I try to rein it in in my videos, but here, oh yeah, I'm going to do, I'm going to complain a little bit. Um, you're probably like, anybody that's watched my videos was like, Wendy, you know, we, you no, know, you actually were complaining quite a bit. <laughs> I'm sorry. Uh, I try not to complain, but it just makes me mad. So now I don't now uh Meg mentioned rose petal finish and she was thinking looking at the children of Litha Mixtress. Ray was talking about rose petal finish, but had given that deck to Meg. And I, I don't have any decks with this said rose petal finish. I don't believe. Um but this is probably the closest thing that I have. And this is a like it this is the Everyday Tarot by Bridget Esselmont. Readily available. I was in Bards and Noble yesterday, and it was like out on the rack with like other games. So she has a really wide reach, and it's a really, it's a. I mean, I don't want to go. I don't want to do a review of this deck, but um, it's it's a small bridge size deck, and when and I and I've shuffled the hell out of it, and it start and it and it does work itself in. You know, it's, it's starting to shuffle better. But it just sticks together like crazy. And, it, and if you're just an overhand shuffler, it sticks together. And if you're in C, yeah, see, I really have to pull it. Um, and it, when you go to pull cards, you can't even tell when it's new. You can't even, you can't even just pull, like, it doesn't slide at all. And if this was, and if you're a new tarot reader and this is your deck, you're really going to struggle with just even getting you know, getting the deck to, to behave as, as a, as a deck, it's a deck of cards, you know? And, and, uh, so I, I, you know, it's worked its way into being better, but honestly, I shouldn't have to work that hard. And this deck, oh, this is, um, playing Marseille by Ryan Edwards. It's a U.S. games deck. And it's a mini size. It's similar to the, I mean, these two are very similar in size, you know, more of a bridge size deck. And I'm really particular about my, about cardstock. Um, and, and not because I need some big fancy cardstock, because I want to shuffle the cards. I want the cards to shuffle. Come on. There's a deck of cards. That's what you do with it, right? Okay. So I didn't look at, any reviews on this card stock because I, and I really love the images and it's a hybrid, you know, Marseille and, um, with playing cards and the, the, the pips are sort of a high hybrid Marseille playing card pips. I didn't look at the car stock and then I got the deck and it's super thick. And I've complained about this in other videos. You cannot shuffle it at all. There is zero bend zero. And when I really try to force it, I've bent, I've bent the cards. I mean, it's just terrible. Oh, it just made me so mad. And I really like this deck and I use it sometimes, but I'm just so like, why? Like, why is, why is the card stock? Maybe they're trying to emulate, you know, emulate older cards. I don't, I don't know. No, no way. I'm saying no to that. Okay. Now for my favorite, uh, Low Scarabeo, Anima, Antiqua decks. And I have in one of my, in my second collection video or third, I complain about it, uh, this deck. I, I kept it, I reined it in on the other two videos, but I let it out a little bit in that video. But this is the most horrendous cardstock for Low Scarabeo. I can't even believe it. I mean, it's just, it's horrendous. And I, when I bought these, I have four or five of these Anima Antiquidex and I purchased them at a point in my life where my husband was graduating from grad school. I was working 
we were moving across country in middle age and it, and I just I want I I desired these decks because you just can't get them you know for a, for a good price and it is just the most horrendous cardstock ever and they're over $30 and and they give you this this uh oh look ooh it's it's limited and I have, look, I have 1,408. Look how special I am. Lo Scarabeo Anima Antiqua. And then, okay, let's read what Lo Scarabeo has, has written here. In order to preserve the original feeling of these ancient images, ancient, like what they're like, what, 150 years old, the cards have not been treated with chemical varnish, and as a result, they might not be suitable for shuffling. Wah, wah. Oh, no. As a result, they have come out with several cool decks that I didn't even know existed um, that I'd like to to get, but if I'm, I'm not buying, I'm not a collector. If you're a collector of decks and you don't ever you tend to use them, you know, good for you. That Like, that's great for you, but I purchased decks with the intention. Now, you know. How, how much time do I have in the day to actually use all the decks I have, but with the intention of them having some sort of use. And this is just shameless. Low Scarabeo, I don't know what in the world. That is terrible. Okay. I feel so good to get that off my chest. Oh, my gosh. So let's talk about some good cardstock here. Let's even it out. And Mixtress Ray had talked about an old deck that she had. Um, an old... Uh, what is this deck called? <laughs> Rider Waite Smith. There's some other names for it, but you know. And this is a gift. This is a vintage deck, and and I, that was given to me by my neighbor's daughter. And and Mix Just, Mix Just Ray had mentioned, and and it's I mean the cardstock is a so nice. It just feels so nice. And it's not overly lam overly laminated cards. I'm not that upset about it unless they're super sticky, like like the Marielle first edition or something like that. But then you then it's just the deck's unusable. But um, and she was saying like, what do we what 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 do we think our decks are going to go through? You know, like how like how sturdy do they actually need to be? And this old deck is really sturdy. The de the cardstock is really nice. And I and, and this deck was really well loved. So whoever had it used it quite a bit. The images are really well done. You know, like the colors and the images are beautiful. Why why can't this why can't we have cardstock like this now? And you know, I'm not a cardstock manufacturer and I get it. You know, they have their ways of manufacturing cards and it's not as it's not as simple as that and I get it. But I mean, why can't why can't we just why can't it be like that? Why not? So I want to just mention a few decks that have really great cardstock and AGM decks make uh great cardstock. This is a little bit of a smaller size. And AGM makes decks, some of their decks are a little bit larger, you know, like, um, and this is not AGM, by the way, but this is just, a, this is a, that's a U.S. Games deck. But these AG, AGM decks, um, and they're not as easy to get in the United States. Now, if you don't like super slippy cardstock, you might not like these. But they're just, you know, they're just a deck of cards. They're, they're, they're not overly laminated. They shuffle beautifully. You know, they're going to. They're going to do what you need them to do. You know, they're a deck of cards. And uh, so I really, I really like um, AGM cardstock. Now, I know I was just talking a lot of shit about Los Scarabeo, but they're regular cards. And this is Tarot Vintage. They have, I really like uh, Los Scarabeo's cardstock size. It's a little thinner, easy to handle, you know, not, and, and just, I don't, you know, so, so I don't understand why Los Scarabeo's regular cardstock, you know, just shuffles beautifully. And I'm shuffling like, you know, with a, with a tripod here. So I'm not shuffling great and I'm not the best shuffler, but just amazing, amazing shuffling. And this is a 
Golden Un Golden Universal. Yeah, Golden Universal by Liz Scarabella. Amazing. Oh, look what I just did. So uh, I didn't think that through, but see, I started. I've started edging it, and it looks super cool. It looks like crap without edging. It looks super cool with the edging, and then I just shuffled it all in like a jerk. Okay, and then uh, and this and U.S. Games is not my favorite card stock, but this this is U.S. Games. What's this one called? <laughs> Aquarian Tarot. Yeah. <laughs> Aquarian Tarot, and it shuffles like amazing. Yeah, I mean, you know, they're cards. Come on. Why can't they just shuffle like, like cards? Because that's what they are, playing cards. Okay, so that's uh, that's my 10-minute, uh, my 11-minute my uh, complaint about cardstock. Oh, man, I just feel... I just feel like so good now that I got that off my chest. Okay, I'm on my second cup of coffee now. And I got all that off my chest. But I wanted to mention one other playing card company, Fournier, which is a Spanish company. And uh, this was AGM. That was Los Carabeo. And US Games is okay, too. Um, but this Fournier, is this, and these two cards are a similar size. And just to give you a, like this is Low Scarabeo, which is pretty close to U.S. games. And then this is, these are two decks are a little bit smaller. But the Fournier Playing Card Company, their decks are a little slippy for some, some people don't like that. It's, I'm fine with it, but they make really nice cards. Um, and they're a little smaller, so they're a little easier to handle. But they just shuffle just um, beautifully. They're just so no nonsense. Um, these are probably my favorite. Like Fournier is probably my favorite, and then AGM, um, and then maybe, uh, and then Los Garabeo, and then US Games. But I wanted to mention Fournier. I had forgotten to bring this deck, a Fournier deck, down here. I'm in my basement. Uh, but they also shuffle beautifully, and I uh, I really love the cardstock on those decks. So I wanted to shout, give them a little, you know, <sighs> Fournier doesn't need me to give them a shout out, but that's what I'm doing. Okay, I have two decks. I want to my second uh, my second deck deal breaker is large decks. I'm um, sorry, I'm childish. Okay, so, um, and this is Mary Packard's playing Marseille, and I've had both these decks for quite a long time. Um, this is uh, Terre Noire. Um, it's a French deck. You can get it on French, second edition on French Amazon. Uh, I believe you still can. And and they're, I mean, they're both really cool decks. I really do like them, but they're just, they're huge. I mean, this is the Tarot Vintage by uh, Lo Scarabeo. To give you an, an idea. And um, had I had, if I had had an understanding of how large these decks were, I don't know necessarily know that I would have purchased them. I probably this one because I love this one so much. But they're just so hard, you know. It, I mean, if you do three card, like if you're Marseille and you do three card, it's not too bad. But they're just so hard to work with. And if you like to leave cards out, like maybe like on your altar or if you have some sort of space where you like to pull cards and see them and, you know, put them up in a vertical fashion, you know, you know, these larger decks are cool because you can see them. And I do like being able to see the images better. And there are some decks that could use, you know, because the, the artwork is so hard to see, it would be nice if they were a little bit larger decks. But just in general, if it's a large deck like these, they're just so hard to work with um, I, that I just, uh, oh, this deck's just so beautiful. And so that's my second deck deal breaker. And I don't have any negative, like, like I don't have decks, large decks that I hate. You know, the Masonic Terra by Jean Bouchard, um, that deck is is not as big as this, but it's also, they're just too hard to handle. And I'm not going to, I'm just not going to pick them up and use them. They're just going to sit on my shelf. And that's what these two do most of the time. I, I have plans to use this one next year. But 
you know, they just sit on the shelf and, and I don't use them. And, and what a shame, you know, what a shame to have a beautiful deck that, that I don't use. Okay, my next deck deal breaker is Hideous Deck Backs. Uh, this is the classic tarot by Los Scarabeo. And I mean, also, let's talk about that. Why? Why, 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 why did, why does that need to be there? I don't know. I regret buying this deck. I've talked about that in another video, in another video, but this, these backs are just so hideous. I mean, this is the star card in the deck and they've, you know, cut, cropped the image and flipped it and made it reversible. And it's just, it's hideous. And this was my first experience with a deck back that I didn't like. And I remember shuffling this deck and trying to use it and then just seeing this, seeing this as the back of the deck. And, and, I, and, and, I, and, and I vowed back then, I was like, a, <laughs> I'm never going to buy another deck back that I don't like. And of course, you know, that I have plenty of deck backs that I don't like, but I don't like that. And that's a deal breaker for me. And also um, decks, a lot of Oracle decks do this as they, and this is actually, this is a good example of that. They use a, a, an image from, from the cards to put on the backs and just, no, 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 no. If you're going to go to all the trouble to make a deck of cards, please make a deck backing that's nice to look at. Why is that so hard? I don't understand. But this, you know, this is a good example of that. It's just hideous. So no, if a deck, if the back of a deck is hideous, I won't, I won't, I actually have decks that I've liked, but I won't buy. And, and, um, another th deck backing thing that I hate and Los Garabeo does this and I just accept it, but this border around why, you know, like. And that goes into like borderless cards, but some companies make a borderless, they'll make a borderless card, but then the back still has this. And I find this deck backing to be fairly ugly. I don't like it. So no. So, and, and, um, you know, the cut I can do without a deck backing that uses, you know, the wand, the sword, the cup and the pentacle. Can we be a little bit more creative than that, please? You know? The, 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 um, Raven's Prophecy Tarot, as much as I love it, I mean, this one is not reversible. I don't necessarily care whether a deck back is reversible because I don't read with reversals, but maybe someday I will. And then all these decks that aren't reversible, I'm going to be, be mad about, but this one is fairly unfortunate for such a great deck. Oh, okay. And this is the Golden Tarot by Cat Black. I have to go to look because words. Um, and this isn't my favorite deck backing ever, but I mean, this is what, this is what the, the back of a card should look like. Okay. You know, not this and not this. No. And, um, you know, the words now, Claire Mac, this is um, Claire Mac's Illuminated Earth Oracle, an amazing, beautiful oracle. And, of course, it's upside down. Um, and I could, mm, the cardstock on this is really nice. It is a little bit hard to shuffle. I just accept it. And I didn't rant about that, although apparently I'm ranting about it right now. She's got her little, uh, that's my, own, one of my one of my complaints about this deck is that. And I understand she's an independent she's independently producing her decks she feels she needs to do that and it's really small so I could you know I can live with it but I don't like it uh, and uh, these backs are beautiful okay I mean and the and the this color is a little bit difficult to reproduce I think for a camera these blues the blues into the purples and the turquoises of uh, digital cameras don't reproduce that well. Um, a beautiful back. You know, what? I mean, is it that hard? You've gone to the trouble of 78 images. You can't go with 79 and make a nice card back. I don't get it. So uh, what, what tarot deck is it that everyone loves that um, Sasha Graham... Is it the Darkwood Tarot? It has the DW on the back. 
I actually won't buy that. And I, and that deck artwork in that deck isn't my favorite. I mean, it's beautifully done, you know, professionally illustrated. I just don't care for the style. But the card backs with that DW, I, I actually won't buy that deck because of that card back. And, you know, that's that's the sad truth of the matter. So um, a, a few more things that I want to mention about deck deal breakers for me, and that is um, pregnancy. Pregnancy in decks. And now in this deck, this is the death card, and they've made the death card pregnant, and there's a lot of pregnant people in this deck. And I talked about this deck in another video, and it's probably, probably, yeah, but see, here's um, the moon. Pregnant, pregnant people in the moon. I think the Queen of Cups is pregnant in this deck. You know, or they're, you know, like showgirl, showgirl boobs are pregnant. Now, I don't have, a, a, a you know, like beautiful people in decks doesn't offend me. Uh, but, um, you know, like I, like pregnant. No, no, no. No pregnancy, and especially not, please don't make a pregnant empress. Please don't. Please don't do it. I don't want to see a pregnant empress. And I photographed a lot of pregnant women, so I just don't want to see that in a deck. You know, it's so trite. It is so trite. Please don't do it. Another thing that I don't like, the chariot card as a car. Or a motorcycle, you know, no, don't do it. Please don't do it. Okay, I reined myself in a little bit, you know. Um, mystic, uh, mystic Wildfire Meg is trying to incite chaos in the world, and it's working. Okay, so I'm reining it in. I'm reining in the chaos, Meg. Okay. So uh, another thing that I don't like is collage decks. I don't care for collage decks very much. And I have two, I have three collage decks that I can think of and two of them are here. This is Cat Black's, um, sorry, this is Cat Black's, uh, Golden Tarot. It's been around for a long time. She collaged it with medieval and, um, early Renaissance artwork and it's really well done. The perspectives done pretty well. It's collaged together pretty well, but and even this, when I see the this kind of collage deck that's well done, my brain is just like no, you know, my brain does not like it. I don't enjoy looking at the images. And um, this is Clara Max Illuminated Earth Oracle. This is also a collage deck. It's not digital collage strictly. She's done a lot of analog work with this deck. Um, so I can accept it and it's beautifully done and I really do like it. Um, oh, my camera does not, maybe does not want to focus. Maybe if I move this, okay, there we go. Um, so it's really well done and, and I like it, but just in general collage decks, uh, I don't like collage decks and all these modern, uh, collage decks, um, sp and, and the Voyager Tarot, I think it's the Voyager Tarot, uh, that deck has been around for a really long time, um, and, um, I don't like that deck, I can't, it's just that collaging together of all of those weird elements, it's so disparate, and I'm, my, my brain is just like, no, I, I can't just doesn't work for me. Now, you know, maybe if I meditate and I focus on something in the card, you know, maybe I'll come to some grand illumination, but no, <laughs> just no, I just can't do it. So no. And, and, and this brings me around to price and, and, and Mixus Ray had, had, has spoken a lot about price in her, uh, deck deal breakers video. And, it's the price of all these independent modern decks. And a lot of them are modern collage decks or modern photography decks. Um, and they're 
you know, they're just, the price of them is astronomical. And there's a new one coming out every other week. You know, I, I think I, I heard Lisa Pepez say that she had counted 60 new decks coming out in one month uh, a while back. And I know that people love them and, and fine, you know, like all those new decks are really cool. My brain just can't handle it. And my pocketbook can't handle it, frankly. I mean, I'm not going to pay. You know, I have a few decks that are expensive. And this is the most recent expensive deck that I purchased. And I don't recall. I think this is around $50. And I and I had bought, I had purchased it for my birthday from some some money that um, that I had that someone had given me money and said, go buy something that you, because they know me, because they know how what a cheap ass I am. And they were like, I want you to use this money to go buy something you wouldn't normally buy yourself. So I bought this deck. (laughs) But these modern decks that cost so much money, I just, I'm just not going to buy them. And and so what I've done is I've I've made I've made a 180 from all these modern beautiful decks that have come out and some of them are beautiful. Don't get me wrong, they're beautiful. But what I've done is I've just made a 180 and now I've just focused on all the old classic decks that are around 20 bucks that I don't have. I don't have a lot of older decks and I'd like to have them, so I just focus on that instead and I just I just close my eyes to that stuff because uh, it's just I don't want to get involved in in all that collecting. And um, and I just want to make a note here about limited edition decks. Um, you know that that artist's artwork is limited edi- is is you know that artist's original artwork is valuable, and maybe they if they do a limited edition print run that's valuable. But I don't want to place value on a deck of cards that's limited edition. I just I don't know. I don't want to do that. So I um I stay away from that. And a lot of those a lot of these modern decks that are limited edition also have an an, an additional agenda. And uh you know, I, I appreciate that they have that agenda, but and but I think they should do that in a gallery and not in a deck of cards. So and this is and this is a an example of what I'm talking about. And, you know, uh, Raven Fallon has added this de- this card to the deck. It's a beautiful card. Protect the wild and green. Okay, you know, of course, of course we want to protect the wild and green. Of course we do. You know, I'm aware. You don't need to bring that awareness to my mind. I already am aware of it. And what are you going to do with this in a reading? Like I and, and to be fair, I have personally pulled this card and it's been relevant to me, but if I was reading for someone else and I wanted to use this deck, I would pull some of these cards out because how is that going to be relevant to their question? You know, probably not. So, you know, I object to a lot of this, you know, adding, adding, uh, you know, some sort of agenda to a deck and, and I, and another, uh, deck that comes to my mind and, and I, I, I don't know the name of the deck and it's been a while. I remember seeing a walkthrough of a deck that was like an ocean deck of some kind. And one of the images had like trash in the bottom of the ocean. And, you know, I, I don't want trash at the bottom of the ocean. I don't want trash anywhere, but what am I going to do with that in a deck of cards? So, you know, it goes, this, this idea goes too far when you're trying to, you know, you're trying to bring awareness to, you know, pollution. Okay. I appreciate that. But what am I going to do with that in a deck of cards? You know, create a gallery, you know, like, you know, create a, create a series of images and put them in a gallery to raise awareness to that. And if you want to add that to your deck, make another card that can be useful and practical, please. So that's what I have to say about that. (laughs) You know, I appreciate, I know these are, I know their heart's in the right place. I appreciate it. You know, another deck. Okay. One more deck is I know there's an animal deck that has the devil as a human. And I don't remember what deck it is. And I know that, you know, that deck creator has their heart in the right place. I get it. But please, you know, I just, I just don't, I, it because it ceases to be useful for me to use as a deck of cards. And you know, you put, put your, put your energy into creating, you know, a gallery show for that. Okay. 
and make another card to put in your deck, please. Okay, so that is my, uh, <laughs> oh, my deck deal breakers uh, video. Um, thanks to Meg for making this tag and allowing me to purge myself of all that negativity. And I feel, I feel fucking amazing now. Yes. So thank you. So anybody that's ever, that's watched this video to the end, thank you. Um, I know not everyone's going to agree with me. That's fine. You know, I, I, I you know, I, I don't mean to do harm to anyone else. You know, I do appreciate deck creators and I'm not trying to cast, you know, cast shade on anyone. Um, just, you know, getting that off my chest. So thank you for watching and, you know, have a wonderful day. Goodbye. <laughs>